Hello from Who Died Today America, and welcome back to our channel. In the past few days, we have received somber news about the passing of extraordinary talents. Today's episode is dedicated to honoring their memory. Additionally, we will recap the stars whom we have recently lost. Before we begin, we kindly ask for your support. If this video or the legacies of these remarkable individuals have touched your life, please consider giving this video a thumbs up as a sign of respect and remembrance. Thank you. Spencer Milligan, the cherished actor known for his iconic role in the 1970s Saturday morning series Land of the Lost, has passed away at the age of 86. Milligan died on April 16th, as announced by an obituary on the Hunes Funeral Home website. Born on September 10, 1937, in Oak Park, Illinois, Milligan's career spanned local theater, television, and film, leaving a lasting legacy in the entertainment world. Milligan's journey in the performing arts began in the 1960s with his active participation in local theater. Following a tour in the Army, he transitioned to the screen, making his film debut with a small role in Woody Allen's 1973 comedy Sleeper. He also appeared in the 1974 films The Man from Clover Grove and The Photographer, where he served as an associate producer. In 1974, Milligan was cast as Rick Marshall in Sid and Marty Croft's sci-fi adventure series Land of the Lost. The show, featuring a blend of live-action and stop-motion animation, followed Rick and his children, Will and Holly, as they navigated a prehistoric world filled with dinosaurs. Milligan's portrayal of Rick Marshall captivated audiences, and he starred in the show's first two seasons. Although his character found a way to escape the land of the lost without his kids, the series continued for another season, ultimately gaining cult status and inspiring revivals and a 2009 feature film. After Land of the Lost, Milligan maintained a vibrant television career, guest starring on numerous popular series such as Gunsmoke, Beretta, The Bionic Woman, Alice, The Dukes of Hazard, and Quincy Maine. He also had a notable seven-episode arc as Ray Gibbons on General Hospital in 1987 and starred in TV movies like The Keegans, Terror Among Us, and Alcatraz, the whole shocking story. Following his television career, Milligan dedicated himself to teaching and directing stage plays in Sturgeon Bay, Wisconsin. His passion for the arts continued to inspire those around him, fostering a love for theater in his community. Spencer Milligan is survived by his wife, Carrie Milligan, and his godchildren, Andy Solis, Hillary Williams, and Spencer Williams. The family has requested that donations in his name be made to the Actors Fund, supporting others in the performing arts community. Milligan's legacy as an actor and mentor will be remembered fondly by fans and colleagues alike. His contributions to the world of entertainment have left an indelible mark, and his presence will be dearly missed. Rest in peace, Spencer Milligan. Tamayo Perry, a celebrated actor, former professional surfer, and well-known lifeguard, tragically passed away at the age of 49 following a shark attack off Oahu's North Shore near Goat Island. This heartbreaking news was confirmed by Shane Enright of the Honolulu Emergency Services Department. Perry, known for his impressive career in surfing and acting, left an indelible mark on both industries. He surfed professionally for over 15 years, winning the prestigious Pipeline Master Trials in 1999. The Pipeline, famous for its deadly waves and challenging tube rides, was Perry's specialty. His expertise and fearless approach to tackling these massive waves earned him immense respect and admiration within the surfing community worldwide. Though Perry never aimed for a world title, his passion was in hunting down big, wild waves and having those exhilarating moments documented. Brendan Buckley, editor of Stab Magazine, highlighted Perry's status as a high-level surfer respected by peers globally. He got some of the craziest waves of his era, Buckley noted. He was insanely respected by obviously everybody there and everybody around the world for what he did. Beyond surfing, 
Harry's acting career included roles in notable productions such as Pirates of the Caribbean on Stranger Tides and the television series Hawaii Five Zero. He also appeared in national commercials, showcasing his versatility and charisma on screen. Harry's vibrant personality and infectious spirit made him a beloved figure both on and off the screen. Together with his wife, Amelia Perry, Tamayo ran the Oahu Surfing Experience, offering surfing lessons and instilling proper surf etiquette and safety in their students. Amelia, a former professional bodyboarder, shared how the ocean knowledge Tamayo imparted to her was invaluable. Perry's career as a lifeguard began in July 2016 with the city and county of Honolulu Ocean Safety. He was known as a lifeguard loved by all, with Honolulu Ocean Safety Acting Chief Kurt Lager describing him as having an infectious personality and a deep love for everyone he encountered. Honolulu Mayor Rick Blangiardi expressed the community's grief, stating, Tamayo was a legendary waterman and highly respected. His death is a tragic loss. Tamayo Perry's untimely passing is a profound loss to his family, friends, and the communities he touched through his surfing, acting, and dedication to ocean safety. His legacy as a fearless surfer, talented actor, and beloved lifeguard will be remembered and cherished by many. Rest in peace, Tamayo Perry. Sarah Becker, a beloved former reality TV star who captivated audiences on season five of MTV's The Real World, has passed away at the age of 52. Becker's family revealed that she tragically died at her home in Illinois last week. Her passing has deeply saddened her fans, friends, and the reality TV community. MTV expressed their condolences, stating, We are deeply saddened to learn of the passing of Sarah Becker. Our hearts go out to her family and friends in this time of grief. Becker had recently relocated to Illinois to support her family, with plans to return to California in the future. Her family shared that she was struggling with mental health challenges and was in recovery from a skateboarding accident. Sarah Becker joined The Real World in 1996 during its fifth season set in Miami, Florida. At the time, she was working as an editor at Wildstorm Comics in La Jolla, California. In a promo for the show, Becker described herself as a 19-year-old trapped in a 25-year-old's body, a testament to her youthful spirit and vibrant personality. The reality series, which brought together young adults from diverse backgrounds to live as roommates for several months, featured Becker alongside Joe Patane, Dan Renzi, Melissa Padron, Mike Lambert, Cynthia Roberts, and Flora Alexieva. Becker's kindness and selflessness left a lasting impression on her castmates and viewers alike. Flora Alexieva, Becker's roommate on the show, shared her heartfelt condolences on Instagram. I am beyond myself and sad to just hear that my roommate Sarah died. I can't believe this. She was the most selfless person I knew. She was always so kind and helpful to everyone. I haven't spoken to her in years and never knew she was troubled. My prayers go out to her family. R.I.P. my roommate, my friend. May you skate with angels and never feel pain again. Sarah Becker's journey on The Real World left an indelible mark on reality television, and her compassionate nature touched the hearts of many. As we remember Sarah, we send our deepest condolences to her family and friends. May she rest in peace, and may her memory be a reminder of the importance of kindness and understanding towards those who may be struggling. Donald Sutherland, who passed away at the age of 88 on June 20th in Miami, was a Canadian actor whose career spanned six remarkable decades. Renowned for his versatility and depth, Sutherland left an indelible mark on the film and television industry, earning numerous accolades including a Primetime Emmy Award, two Golden Globe Awards, and an Academy Honorary Award in 2017. Despite never receiving a competitive Academy Award nomination, he is celebrated as one of the finest actors of his generation. Sutherland's rise to fame began with iconic roles in films such as The Dirty Dozen, Mass H, and Kelly's Heroes. 
His ability to seamlessly transition between leading and supporting roles in diverse genres made him a beloved figure in Hollywood. His filmography boasts an impressive array of performances in movies like Clute, Don't Look Now, Animal House, Ordinary People, and The Hunger Games franchise, where he portrayed the chilling President Snow. On television, Sutherland's portrayal of a forensic psychiatrist in Citizen X earned him a Primetime Emmy Award. His compelling performances in Uprising and Path to War garnered him additional Golden Globe Awards, cementing his status as a versatile and powerful actor across mediums. Beyond his professional achievements, Sutherland was deeply honored in his native Canada. He was inducted into the Canadian Walk of Fame in 2000 and the Hollywood Walk of Fame in 2011. In recognition of his contributions to the arts, he was made an Officer of the Order of Canada in 1978 and later elevated to Companion of the Order of Canada in 2019. Sutherland's illustrious career was further commemorated with a Canada Post stamp issued in his honor in 2023. Sutherland's personal life was as rich as his professional one. He was the father of Kiefer, Rossif, and Angus Sutherland, all of whom followed in his footsteps to become actors. His passion for acting and commitment to his craft were evident until the very end, as he continued to inspire audiences and fellow actors alike. Donald Sutherland's legacy is one of extraordinary talent, unwavering dedication, and a profound impact on the world of entertainment. He will be remembered as a true legend whose performances captivated and moved audiences for generations. His contributions to film and television will continue to be celebrated, ensuring that his influence endures long after his passing. Tony Lo Bianco, a distinguished American actor whose career spanned both stage and screen, passed away at the age of 87 on June 11th after a courageous battle with prostate cancer. Lo Bianco's legacy is marked by his remarkable versatility and dedication to his craft, making a lasting impact on both theater and film. Born on October 19, 1936, in Brooklyn, New York, to first-generation Italian-American parents, Lo Bianco's journey into acting began with a passion ignited during high school. Encouraged by a teacher to explore theater, he pursued acting at the Dramatic Workshop, setting the foundation for an illustrious career. Lo Bianco's early career was defined by his work in theater. He was a founding member and artistic director of the Triangle Theater, collaborating with notable figures such as lighting designer Jules Fisher, playwright Jason Miller, and actor Roy Scheider. His Broadway debut came in the 1960s, with standout performances in productions like Incident at Vichy and The Royal Hunt of the Sun. Transitioning to film in the 1970s, Lo Bianco made a significant impact with roles in acclaimed new Hollywood crime films. He starred in The Honeymoon Killers, the French Connection, and The Seven Ups. His performance in The French Connection remains iconic, contributing to the film's critical success. Lo Bianco's talent shone brightly on stage as well. He won an Obie Award in 1975 for his role in Yanks 3, Detroit Zero, Top of the Seventh, and received a Tony Award nomination for Best Actor in 1983 for his portrayal of Eddie Carbone in Arthur Miller's A View from the Bridge. His portrayal of Fiorello H. LaGuardia in the one-man show Hisoner earned him a New York Emmy Award, and he continued to captivate audiences with subsequent iterations of the play. Tony Lobianco's legacy extends beyond his film and theater roles. He was a devoted family man, leaving behind his wife, Alice Best Muldoon, his three daughters from his first marriage, and a rich legacy of artistic excellence. His enduring contributions to the arts and his commitment to humanitarian causes will be remembered fondly by all who knew and admired him. Rest in peace, Tony Lobianco. Your talent, dedication, and kindness have left an indelible mark on the world. Mark James, an esteemed American songwriter, passed away on June 8 at the age of 83 in his Nashville home. Known for his remarkable contributions to the music industry, 
James penned some of the most enduring hits for legendary artists, such as B.J. Thomas, Brenda Lee, and Elvis Presley. His legacy is etched in the annals of music history, leaving an indelible mark on the hearts of many. Born Francis Zambone on November 29, 1940, in Houston, Texas, James was the son of an Italian-born building contractor and a schoolteacher. His passion for music blossomed during high school, where he played the violin and accordion and conducted the school orchestra. However, it was the guitar that truly captivated him, leading him to pursue a career in songwriting and performance. In his early career, James performed in clubs around Houston and released his first single, Jive Note, in 1959. He formed the Mark James Trio and achieved moderate success with songs like Running Back and Tell Me. His career took a brief hiatus when he was drafted into the U.S. Army and served in Vietnam, but he returned with renewed vigor, moving to Memphis in 1968. Working as a staff songwriter for Chips Moman's publishing company, James crafted hits for his childhood friend B.J. Thomas, including The Eyes of a New York Woman, Hooked on a Feeling, and It's Only Love. Hooked on a Feeling, inspired by his high school sweetheart Karen Taylor, became his first top 10 hit. James's own rendition of Suspicious Minds caught the attention of Elvis Presley, who recorded the song in 1969. The Presley version became a monumental success, reviving the King's career and cementing the song's place in music history. Suspicious Minds was later honored by Rolling Stone as one of the 500 greatest songs of all time. Mark James's legacy is one of profound musical influence and timeless artistry. His songs continue to resonate with audiences around the world, and his contributions to the music industry will be remembered for generations to come. Rest in peace, Mark James. Your music will forever live on in our hearts. William Russell, an esteemed English actor whose career spanned over seven decades, passed away on June 3rd at the age of 99. Known for his versatility and enduring presence on stage and screen, Russell's legacy is cherished by fans and colleagues alike. Born William Russell Enoch on November 19, 1924, in Sunderland County, Durham, Russell discovered his passion for acting at an early age. Educated at Wolverhampton Grammar School and Oxford University, he honed his craft while organizing entertainment during his national service in the Royal Air Force. Following his education, he embarked on a prolific career in repertory theater. Russell first gained prominence in the television series The Adventures of Sir Lancelot, where he played the title role. However, it was his role as schoolteacher Ian Chesterton in the original cast of BBC One's Doctor Who that cemented his place in television history. From 1963 to 1965, Russell starred alongside William Hartnell, Jacqueline Hill, and Carol Ann Ford in the show's inaugural episodes. His portrayal of Ian, a steadfast companion to the Doctor, became iconic and beloved by fans. In addition to Doctor Who, Russell's film career included notable roles in The Man Who Never Was, The Great Escape, and Superman. On television, he continued to captivate audiences with performances in shows like Coronation Street, where he appeared as Ted Sullivan in 1992. Russell's dedication to his craft extended well beyond his on-screen appearances. He remained closely connected to the Doctor Who universe, lending his voice to several audiobook releases and participating in various DVD commentaries and interviews. His commitment to the series was further demonstrated in 2022 when he made a cameo appearance as Ian Chesterton in the special episode, The Power of the Doctor, earning him a Guinness World Record for the longest gap between TV appearances. William Russell's contribution to the arts, his enduring legacy in Doctor Who, and his influence on generations of actors and fans will be remembered and celebrated. His talent, dedication, and kindness left an indelible mark on all who had the privilege of knowing him. Rest in peace, William Russell. Your remarkable journey and contributions to entertainment will forever be cherished. Breaking news of the day. News 1. 
legendary drag racer John Force is still in the ICU after a fiery crash at Virginia Motorsports Park on June 23rd. Drag race champion John Force remained in the intensive care unit at a Virginia hospital on Monday, read a June 24th statement released by John Force Racing on X. Following a catastrophic engine failure that sent his funny car slamming into a concrete guard wall at 302 miles per hour during the first round of Sunday's NHRA Virginia Nationals at Virginia Motorsports Park, Force's engine exploded as he crossed the finish line, causing the vehicle to hit both walls of the racetrack. Safety personnel extricated and stabilized Force before he was transported to a local hospital via medical helicopter. Force, 75, was conscious and communicative with the rescue team at the scene. The statement added that the 16-time champion was still being observed and evaluated as of Monday. Attending doctors purposely were moving slowly in assessing the extent of the injuries of the Hall of Fame owner and driver because of the intensity of the impact, the statement continued. Medical staff will not provide a treatment and recovery timetable until a total evaluation is complete. Force's family, including his wife Lori and daughters Brittany, Adria, Ashley, and Courtney, joined him at the hospital. The family will appear at the next competition event in Norwalk, Ohio, to represent Force's team. Brittany, also a drag racer, witnessed the incident while racing the same day. My dad's going to be all right. I was in the ambulance with him, holding his hand, Brittany told Auto Week on Sunday. And he's one of the toughest people I know, so he'll bounce back, like he always does. News 2. Ted Danson, beloved for his roles on Cheers and The Good Place, recently revealed his lifelong struggle with moderate to severe plaque psoriasis. Despite his charming on-screen presence, Danson, 75, has battled this chronic skin condition which significantly impacted his self-esteem. People would compliment me as Sam Malone, but part of my brain was always thinking, if only you knew, Danson shared. It felt like I had to hide something, and that's not a good way to live. Danson's condition, characterized by itchy, scaly rashes, often flares up due to stress. Reflecting on his comedic career, he wonders if his self-deprecating humor was a defense mechanism. I'll make fun of myself before someone else does, he said. Now Danson is partnering with Bristol Myers Squibb for the So Have You Found It campaign, encouraging those with plaque psoriasis to explore treatment options with their dermatologists. The campaign highlights the importance of a holistic approach to treatment. Dr. Jennifer Sang, a dermatologist involved in the campaign, emphasized the advances in psoriasis treatment. In the last 10 to 20 years, we've developed more targeted treatments for psoriasis, she said. It's never been a better time to have psoriasis because of the available treatment options. Danson has tried numerous treatments over the years, including light therapy and various ointments. About 15 years ago, he found a medication that worked well for him. I feel I have other issues at 76, but I'm not worried about plaque psoriasis anymore, he said with a chuckle. Danson wants others diagnosed with psoriasis to know they're not alone. A young man called me, devastated by his diagnosis, he recalled. I told him, I get it, it's embarrassing, but you're lucky. Medicine has come up with something that will really help you. It's about empowering people not to feel victimized by this disease. Through his advocacy, Danson hopes to raise awareness and support for those living with psoriasis, encouraging them to seek help and find effective treatments.